appears ordinary until you see the core side of it. And what you're looking for is a story behind the news. We bring it to you from Lagos, the commercial capital of Nigeria. Giving you all sides and political stories round the clock. Every detail from the start line to the final whistle. Core TV News, expanding your view. Hello there and welcome to Core TV Primetime News. I am Frank of Malape. In our major story, Federal government slashes 2015 budget proposal in response to falling oil prices. Also in this program, the Senate again differs decisions on whether to extend emergency rule in northeast Nigeria. Summon security and defense chiefs. AKT APC lawmakers desert House of Assembly complex as row deepens. Outside Nigeria, massive snowstorm wrecks havoc in the northeastern U.S. Thank you for joining us tonight. The federal government has reviewed the 2015 budget proposal from 4.817 trillion to 4.661 trillion era in response to falling oil prices. An indication to these was seen in the new 2015 the 2070 million term expenditure framework sent to the National Assembly by the Presidency. President Golak Jonathan explained in a covering letter addressed to the Senate President that a 156 billion naira cut in the 2015 spending plan is due to the slump in oil price. The government plans to spend 1.20 trillion on the capital expenditure while recurrent expenditure is put at 2.62 trillion naira. The document shows that the benchmark oil price was put at $73 a barrel with a projected production volume of 2.27 million barrels a day. The government also projected 4.733 trillion naira and 4.930.29 trillion naira as expenditure for 2016 and 2017 respectively. The, federal, the Federation Accounts Allocation Committee has shared a 593.33 billion naira among the three tiers of government for October. The amount is, however, a 10 billion naira less than 603 billion naira that was disbursed in September in continuation of the trend of a progressive shortfall and distributable revenue for several months. Minister of State for Finance Bashir Yuguda told journalists after a two-day meeting that ended on Tuesday night that there was a slight improvement in VAT receipt. It will be integrated with the planned national rail network. There is a provision of 280 million in the 2014 FCT statutory appropriation for the project. The project, upon completion, will reduce traffic congestion, shorten journey distance, and reduce pressure on existing public transport services. The project will also provide employment, employment opportunities to about 5,000 skilled and unskilled workers, while about 4,500 skilled workers will be engaged in the direct operation of the system of completion. After due consideration, Council approved the award of the contract for the consultancy services for the feasibility study and conceptual design of lots four, five, and six of the Abuja Rail Mass Transit Network for the FCT in favor of Mercedes Ladium Associates in the sum of 272,737,710 naira with a completion period of 12 months. 
No, but we have uh, gotten information. It's possible for us to open a portion that is already completed. I think I, we took some media people on the tour and they saw how far we have gone. We have finished the, the rail. We have uh, brought in everything that needs to be brought. What is remaining are the stations, because we cannot just do a mass transit in the city without the stations. This is what is outstanding. Of course, we need to procure the, the rolling. State governments are demanding $2 billion from the excess crude accounts to complete ongoing projects. They have since sent a proposal outlining the request to President Gulag Jonathan. Accountant General of Federation uh, says Jonah Otula disclosed this on Tuesday night on the sidelines of the meeting of the Federation Accounts Allocation Committee meeting. He added that the balance of the account presently stands at $4.1 billion. A Bonyu State Commissioner for Finance and Chair of Finance Commissioners Forum, Mr. Timothy Oda, for his part in the effort, the state governments are optimistic that President Jonathan will favorably consider their proposal. The Senate is to defer its decision on whether to extend emergency rule in northeast Nigeria until it gets proper briefing from the security and defense chiefs. It has therefore summoned service chiefs to appear before the entire Senate on Thursday to shed light on the security situation in Adamawa, Peronu, and Yoba State. This was the outcome of a second day of deliberation by senators, which was again done behind closed doors. The discussions, like um, we had earlier said, was very frank, very robust, and sometimes very acrimonious, which is usual in political uh, discussions. And we agreed, as a Senate, that the discussions will continue tomorrow. And also, for the purposes of having further information to invite the service chiefs to be available tomorrow to also brief us on the efforts that uh, has been ongoing in the past six months when the uh, emergency was declared. And uh, to that, we have adjourned it tomorrow, and we will also uh, consider uh, the information that we will get from the service chiefs tomorrow, from further information that will also be available to us from the governors of the <coughs> states that are going to be contacted by the Senate President, and uh, we will, uh, we hope, uh, take a decision tomorrow in the interest of uh, this country. In spite of the opposition mounted by some northern senators, Baranu State Governor Kashim Shetima is back in plans to extend emergency rule in the three northeast Nigerian states. The Kashima made the statement government's position known in a statement through his media aide Isa Guso. He said he had no doubts about the sincerity of President Golag Jonathan, but wants the military to do more to turn the tide against the insurgents. The governor added that the safety of Borno people and their continuing existence are more paramount to him than being in power. The recent crack in the Akiti State House of Assembly has resulted in another dangerous twist as the arrowheads of the two factions now accuse each other of acting against the interests of the state. Visited by a group of market women to the PDP caucus, uh, the assembly complex was described as another cook-up's protest against the APC majority. A correspondent, Rashid Rashid, has more in this report. The drama rocking the Ekiti State House of Assembly is in no time going to end soon with the current twist added to the whole saga. The APC lawmakers in a clear absence from the assembly have deserted the complex at the mercy of their PDP colleagues. As the PDP lawmakers play host to representatives of Ekiti market women on a solidarity visit, the speaker Adewale Omiri says it's another orchestrated form of protest against the House of Assembly. What we have done is the interest of Ikiti people. And these old women, they have come to display that. And we likewise reciprocate their coming. We have seen incessant uh, protests to the House of Assembly on daily basis. And the sole aim is to incite the public again the House of Assembly. 
and inside the public against me. The lawmakers also trade accusations bordering on financial impropriety. These people are the few of them that are defected to, to PDP are not helping the governor. They are really not helping the governor. They have seen an avenue to make money. These are the money mongers in the house. There's no way I will have been involved because I didn't belong to the appropriation uh, committees of the house. So I wouldn't have involved in anything as he has uh, this. He is known for that. And they appear not done with each other, especially on sundry issues. I had a meeting with seven of them. I said we are sitting tomorrow to clear the, uh, to give the governor the go ahead to take the two million low, two billion loan from the central bank. You know what they said? They said no. That you have to meet your other colleagues tomorrow. Then we we'll meet the governor. That I have to negotiate the percentage of the loan with the governor. The first time he visited Mr. Governor, he was giving five point four. The second time he visited that place, I was not there. He was giving another 5.4. And the other time when there was even need for us to pass the commissioner, when he was demanding for money from them, he was the one talking directly with Mr. Governor. They further threw caution to the wind as temper flare. They just turned out lies. I said we are all fools in a good state. In the fountain of knowledge. When you see a drunk man like Omere, there is no alternative something that is for him to be tendering unacceptable uh, excuses here and there, and that is what Omer is known for. The last of this renewed battle for supremacy is definitely yet to be seen as the people of Ikiti watch in bated breath. Rashid Rashid, or TV News, Ado Ikiti. You're watching Court TV Primetime News. On easy cam, as Adamawa PDP dissolves ESCO. Find out more after this timeout. Don't go away. Students. Every day, life is made better by the moments of surprise we create for others and for ourselves. Be better. Surprise someone this season and make sure to text 11 to 400 to get a surprise from MTN. MTN. Everywhere you go. A roller coaster beyond what you knew about Fuji. That's right. J1 Live Unusual Concert. It's Fuji Redefined by the King of Fuji himself, King Wasuaide Marshall, the ultimate. With bright ticket performances from Lagbaja, Tubaba, Victor Laya, DJ Jimmy Jazz, Olamide, Sasha P, Honeybee, and many more. K1 Live Unusual, 21st of November at the Eco Hotel Convention Center. Hosted by King of Comedy, Alibaba, and Comedy by Bucci. Red carpet starts at 7 p.m. Tickets, 10,000. Premium table, 1 million. VIP table, 2 million. State box, 5 million. Think you can handle it? Tickets it's available at Niger Ticket Shop Outlets in the Eco Hotel and Suites. Silverbed Cinemas in VI. Ikeja City Mall and Ozone Cinema in Yaba or online at ninjatsicketshop.com. For table bookings, call 09025K1 Live or 09025515483. Email glproductions at sodiumng.com. Supported by Lagos State Government, Lhasa, Beat, Niger, Classic FM, Hip TV, Ray Power, Kenny's Music, Prime Time, BHM, Mega Screen, and EEC. K1 Live Unusual. Get down. Fuji Redefined. <laughs> You're still watching Court TV Primetime News. If you're just joining us, here is a quick reminder of some of our major headlines. Federal government slashes 2015 budget proposal in response to falling oil prices. The Senate again differs decision on whether to extend emergency rule in northeast Nigeria. 
summon security and defense chiefs. And I can see APC lawmakers desert House of Assembly complex as round dippings. Thank you for being there. For more information, you can join us on our social media platform. Log on to facebook.com forward slash QuartyV News. And our Twitter handle at QuartyV News NG. You can also log on to www.youtube.com forward slash QuartyV. Leave a space, then news. The crisis of confidence in Adamawa state politics has moved its ugly head into the People's Democratic Party. The dissolution of the party's state's executive has thrown up new challenges and fused divisions among party members. A correspondent Martin Dixon looks at the consequences of the development in this report. The dissolution of the Adamawa State People's Democratic Party ESCO has thrown party supporters and stakeholders in a state of confusion and disarray. Speaking to journalists in Yola, the state party chairman, Joel Madaki, says the party at the state level will not accept injustice and will remain true to the principles of fair play and justice. What they are trying to do cannot happen during my time. It cannot happen. Imposition cannot happen. It is a matter for just imposition. It is a matter they want to do. They want to do things with a view to impose somebody. Nobody will impose in Adamawa again. I want to tell the people of Adama State will continue to resist anything bad. We we'll continue to resist. We are in good working relationship with all the aspirants. All the stakeholders of the party reiterated the fact that it is a ploy by some Abuja-based politicians to impose candidates on the people of the state. Uh, I was uh, quite taken aback by the pronouncement of the National Working Committee dissolving. Um, uh, the Adama State ESCO. Uh, I don't know what their reasons are, but really uh, it was shocking and uh, I don't think that decision was really taken in the best interest of Adama State. People will decide who will govern them. Whether they dissolve the party executive at the point of election or not. If PDP is not interested in winning election, that's their own business. But this dissolution will not stand because we are also indigents of Adamawa. We decide who will rule us, not a clique, because they have connections with the national chairman. Many of the party members say they should be allowed to take decision on the fate of the party in Adamawa state. They accuse some privileged politicians of manipulating the national executive of the PDP. There shouldn't be any subterranean influence playing on the intelligence of the Adamao state people. We are here and we know what we want and nobody should tell us what we want. If it is uh, a trumpet, we should be allowed to blow our own trumpet and let nobody blow our own trumpet. We don't want it. And that which was perfectly done um, is an error and we condemn it in strong terms. The state holder in Adama State and the PDP supporters in Adama State entirely are not happy with the decision with the National Working Committee. The recent crisis in the state PDP is seen by the people of the state as a political crisis too many to be allowed to take root, seeing that the state has witnessed too many crises of late. Martins Dixon, Core TV News, Yola. The All Progressive Congress says it will resist any attempt to disenfranchise Nigerians in the run-up to the 2015 general elections. It specifically decried the non-provision of permanent voters' cards for duly registered voters in many parts of the country, while accusing the Independent National Electoral Commission of sabotage. APC leaders made this declaration at a rally time salvation rally at the Eagle Square in Abuja. The party chieftains also raise issues on the possibility of free and fair elections next year. Okay. 
every Nigerian who is qualified to vote and has duly registered must get his permanent voter's card. Do you say yes? Yes. Vote out the PDP next year. Vote out the PDP next year. If you want them a secure efficient in Nigeria, you just have to do that. No alternative. Make sure you get your permanent voter's card. Make sure you have got and voted for those who want to represent you and lead you. And make sure your votes count. CPC and PAPC. ACN and APC. ANPP and APC. APGA and APC. Nigeria. The national chairman of the Unity Party of Nigeria, Frederick Fashion, has accused some members of the party of corruption and anti-party activities. He, however, added that the party will still make a very big impact come 2015 general election despite the lapses. A correspondent of Motayuala was at a media brief by the UPN chairman in Lagos and brought back this report. <laughs> Political parties across the country are involved in various activities to position themselves rightly before the electorate ahead of the 2015 general elections. For the Unity Party of Nigeria, UPN, it is time to set the record straight before Nigerians as it vows to shield them from politicians the party described as opportunist and rebellious in nature. These charlatans have never spent their own money for anything altruistic in UPN. They made it clear that they are in politics to make money. They found a soulmate in a man of suspicious means with whom they allied to keep the party immobile. Till date, there is no single record of the various amounts they collected on behalf of the party for purchases, projects, and programs including for convening UPN neck meetings. These charlatans detest accountability. These charlatans abhor transparency. These charlatans have no business with integrity, honesty, and discipline. These charlatans hate the checks and balances characteristic of democracy. UPN National Chairman Frederick Fasion accused the party's National Organizing Secretary Teju Ola Teju and the National Publicity Secretary Adedeji Salau of leading a faction that has done everything to cripple the party and challenge them to make a public response to the allegations. However, other UPN officers from the North, the South, the East, the West remain strong in the face of these agents of impunity. Together, we are determined to see impunity fall in UPN. We are determined to ensure that evil does not triumph in UPN. Darkness must not overcome light in our party. As Dele Giwa said, the triumph of evil over good can only be temporary. Fasiyan debunks claims in some quarters that the party has not been duly registered by INEC and brandished documents before supporters gathered at the occasion to prove Dalton and Themis is wrong. <laughs> While the UPN works to put its house in order before the 2015 elections, the electorate is also looking at which of the many choices will best meet their yearnings. Omotai Ualo, Core TV News, Lagos. The shoddy distribution of the permanent voter cards and the ongoing voters' registration exercise have not gone down well with the Coalition of Democrats for Electoral Reform. Following these, the body has expressed lack of confidence in the ability of the Independent National Electoral Commission to conduct a credible general elections in 2015. A correspondent to Luashi Adiguki has more. Obviously, 
These are not the best of times for INEC as condemnations continue to trail its shoddy conduct of the ongoing voters' registration exercise and the distribution of the permanent voter cards. The Coalition of Democrats for Electoral Reform is the latest to join in the criticism of the electoral body. Danger, according to CODA, looms for the 2015 general elections if INEC is not checked immediately. Convener of the coalition, Ayo Padoku, is disappointed at INEC. The insider's information revealed to us that a, 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 an Inyibi, a Kenyan called Inyibi, is the gas ICT consultant. He developed a software to help them find solutions to some of those challenges. That software has not been tested anywhere else. It has not been tested before as to whether or not in solving the immediate crisis, it was not the kind of software that can have negative technical effect on other things. What has been established today is that that software, patch, called patch, has been wiping out corrupting the fingerprint already captured. So that's why there are zero instances of remarks on many sheets, many raw data they've handed over to the political parties. There are particular instances where a whole uh, word unit will have zero uh, 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 remarks because the fingerprints that were captured had been wiped out. Not minding his disappointment, Okwadoku has this advice for the electoral body. The circumstance of the moment as revealed by this voters register crisis is that he's not in a position to do to deliver. Our advice, Koda's humble, very strenuous, reasonable advice is that Koda should allow the 2011 voters register compiled to remain. Continuous voters registration should go simultaneously with it. Card reader should be left out of this equation because it is counterproductive now. However, political observers who have continued to criticize INEC over the development say no amount of advice appears to be working at this stage as the electoral body searches for the right clue. Uluwashi Yadigoke, Court TV News, Lagos. The people of Eda Town, a neighboring community of Oshibo, the Oshun State, Kapju, now live in palpable fear after clash between two rival cult gangs left one of the leaders dead. A reprisal attack that followed also reduced the town, which hosted Federal Polytechnic, to a ghost community with 23 people so far arrested in connection with the unrest. Rashid Rashid has more in this report. Trouble started in the early hours of Monday when a leader of a cult group, Ganyu Olaliko, popularly known as El Lemo, was murdered in cold blood after a clash with a rival group. A reprisal attack was then launched by the gang of the deceased, throwing the whole other town into pandemonium. So other groups, other members of his group now came out in the daylight to make an attack on other groups that they know maybe they have rivalry. But they are purely touts in the town that have been disturbing the peace. But what we are experiencing could be an aftermath of maybe they were sent away from Ibadan or Lagos State. But on my way from Aberdeen now, I saw a three-loaded vehicle, purely women. But what surprised me that they are all putting on charms on their necks and what have you. This incident has paralyzed the once bustling socio-economic activity of the Asian town. The traditional ruler of Ede and Osho State government official ascribed the cause of the crisis to unemployment. You see, we have this mass unemployment. A situation where you see people that have uh, HND, BSc, MSc looking for jobs for a period of say 10, 20 years, you know it's appalling. And uh, there is a problem that says once you are not uh, once you are not engaged fruitfully, definitely the devil will use that hands. I want to appeal to to the government, both the federal, the states, and then the local government to help us create jobs. The responsibility of the government is to ensure that there is adequate security of lives and property. And what we expected is that everybody will behave and 
allow peace to reign. The head of the local vigilante group in Oshun State, who is also a native of the town, however, passed the blame to the leadership of the town and politicians, whom he accused of making use of the youth as political thugs. People, as you can see, they are not a stranger. And they have family. Let the cabbage you call them to order. If you call them today, and they has us to go home with them. Me, if they call me today, yes, I am. We want, we want this thing, uh, this part of our, our people. The solution uh, already is there. The police say at least 23 persons have been arrested in connection with the killing. About 23 suspects were arrested and 10 motorcycles they used to transport themselves from nowhere were recovered from them. Now the situation is under control. Patrol team are there day and night. I assure people of Oshun State that we are on top of the situation and I will not tolerate, I will not allow any thuggery in this state before, during and after election. Ede Town was recently in the news for a yet to be resolved crisis. Rashid Rashid, Paul TV News, Ede Oshun State. The Federal Capital Territory has accused security personnel of frustrating the existing ban on motorcycles in Abuja city centre. FCT Minister Bala Mohammed told State House correspondent that the police and soldiers are the main violators of the ban. Okada ban, this is the area that I'm thoroughly frustrated. But you discover that most of the people that are violating the ban are security agencies. You see the police, the military, we are using their own officers, not even the, the young people that are coming for greener pasture. And so they encourage them, not only around Nyanya, even by the vicinity of this villa. Sometimes I, as a minister, go around to say, you go to Area 1, you see it with absolute uh, uh, what, what, uh, impunity and arrogance. You will drive them away, they will come back because <clears throat> you discover that some of the policemen are using it to go to, their, to, to, to go to work. Now motorcycles are being used. I'm discussing with the new commissioner of police. You will see some changes because he has given me his own plan to make sure that no secret count is kept. Unless we do that, there is no how we will enforce the ban on Akada. The National Human Rights Commission has begun a three-day public hearing on forced evictions and demolition of properties in the federal capital territory. Speaking at the opening, chairman of the three-day, uh, three-member rather, panel, Chidi Odikan, reaffirmed the importance of respecting every citizen's rights to shelter and human dignity. He also stressed the need to ensure that all Nigerians are traceable as part of the nation's collective security. The sitting is one in an ongoing series across the country. As a matter, secondly, of our political economy, as I said, the biggest investment we make is in the dignity of our people and those who live in Nigeria, and also in land and investment that comes with it. If children are not brought up in a home, there's a problem with the moral environment in which they grow up. In the current security context in which we live, it is safer for all of us if everybody has an address. Because if somebody does not have an address, number one, they can get very angry. Two, they, their morality can be messed up. And number three, if they do something against us, we cannot trace them. You can trace somebody with an address, you cannot trace somebody without an address. So there is a common sense reason for the National, Security, the National Human Rights Commission to get involved in this. It is a contribution to our collective security as Nigerians. We need Nigerians that we can trace. We need people in the country that we can trace. When you cannot trace people, it is a security risk. Members of local community in Kaduna State have accused subsidiary of the Nigerian National Petroleum Corporation, NNPC, of not doing enough for its host community. Residents of Rido, a community in Chikun local uh, government area, are accusing the Kaduna 
a refining and petrochemical company of carelessness about its social responsibility. The community members say they have no access to portable water, good roads, and their unemployed youth are not considered for employment by the company. As my chairman told you initially, we even tried for a couple of days when we tried, we said that we are going to go out for a small rally, peaceful rally, to show our concern with our own brothers and sisters that we are around here and to show that we need them to do us some work. Because this is, this refinery has been here for over 30 something years. But you can see our roads, you can see what is happening in the other places, even all these communities here. We have more than five different communities, but we are arranging five base because we say that we are five base community. And I'm the vice chairman of that community. So we have been trying to see them. But now, as we went to the commissioner, as my chairman had told you, he has promised, and he has even tendered some kind of issue to them that they should consider us. Really, we will be very happy to hear that and even to feel happy for them that going to that court for our own benefit. But we don't know what actually is happening there. Because in due time, some of the journalists, they do come here and they talk, they see what is happening within the community. But at last, we don't know what has happened after they had gone. So now, if this thing occur or it happened, that those people that took them to the court, they are going behind and do whatever. We don't know actually what is happening there. But we are very happy to see that some people, they're concerned about us. They even took this company down to the court to fight for us. We'll be very, very happy. We even like them. Let them come closer to us. Let us join hand together with, with them. Because we, in the five days, we are fighting for our community. You're still watching Court TV Primetime News. We'll take another break now and then return with business, sports and stories outside Nigeria. Stay with us. of surprise we create for others and for ourselves. Be better. Surprise someone this season and make sure to text 11 to 400 to get a surprise from MTN. MTN. Everywhere you go. Beyond what you knew about Fuji. That's right. K1 Live Unusual Concert. It's Fuji Redefined by the King of Fuji himself, King Wasuaide Marshall, the ultimate. With breathtaking performances from Lagbaja, Tubaba, Victor Laya, DJ Jimmy Jazz, Olamide, Sasha P, Honeybee, and many more. K1 Live Unusual, 21st of November at the Eco Hotel Convention Center. Hosted by King of Comedy, Alibaba, and Comedy by Bucci. Red Carpet starts at 7 p.m. Tickets, 10,000. Premium table, 1 million. VIP table, 2 million. States box, 5 million. Think you can handle it? Tickets available at Niger Ticket Shop Outlets in the Eco Hotel and Suites. Silverbed Cinemas in VI. Ikeja City Mall and Ozone Cinema in Yaba or online at ninjatsicketshop.com. For table bookings, call 09025K1 Live or 09025515483. Email glproductions at sodiumng.com. Supported by Lagos State Government, Lhasa, Beat, Niger, Classic FM, Hip TV, Ray Power, Kenny's Music, Prime Time, BHM, Mega Screen, and EEC. K1 Live Unusual. Down. Fuji Redefined. <laughs> In business tonight, the federal government has approved a 272 million naira contract for consultancy services for the visibility study and conceptual design of lots 4, 5 and 6 of the Abuja Light Rail Mass Transit System. 
This was the outcome of the Federal Executive Council meeting presided over by President Gulag Jinathan in Abuja. Supervising Minister of Information Nuruddin Mohammed and the Minister of the Federal Capital Territory Bala Mohammed told State House correspondent that the project has a completion period will be of integrated 12 months. With the planned National Rail Network, there is a provision of 280 million in the 2014 FCT statutory appropriation for the project. The project upon completion will reduce traffic congestion, shorten journey distance and reduce pressure on existing public transport services. The project will also provide employment, employment opportunities to about 5,000 skilled and unskilled workers, while about 4,500 skilled workers will be engaged in the direct operation of the system on completion. After due consideration, Council approved the award of the contract for the consultancy services for the feasibility study and conceptual design of lots 4, 5, and 6 of the Abuja Rail Mass Transit Network for the FCT in favor of Mercedes Ladium Associates in the sum of 272,737,710 naira with a completion period of 12 months. No, but we have uh, gotten information. It's possible for us to open a portion that is already completed. I think I, we took some media people on the tour and they saw how far we have gone. We have finished the, the rail. We have uh, brought in everything that needs to be brought. What is remaining are the stations, because we cannot just do a mass transit in the city without the stations. This is what is outstanding. Of course, we need to procure the, the rolling stock, that is the locomotives and what have you, and we are already ordering for them, and we have money for that. So definitely by 2015, this project is supposed to be on course. We want to make it the first kind of service that we are rendering to Abuja to reduce the cost of transportation. And because of the increase in population, definitely that is the only way we will be able to carry commuters to and from the satellite times, especially since the population has uh, tripled from one point something to five million, uh, completely outside our plan as a, as a master plan of the city, where we thought even by the completion of all the districts, we would have just had 3.5 million population. But now with only 10 or 11 districts, we already have five to six million. In sports now, this may not be uh, good news for uh, Nigeria as South Africa Bafana Bafana have scuttled the dream of Nigeria's Super Eagles to defend their crown at the African Cup of Nations in Equatorial Guinea as a stunned Nigerian with 2-0 lead before the Eagles leveled the game at 2-2. Bafana Bafana, who had boasted they would beat the Nigerians at home for the first time, made good their pledge when they scored the first goal towards the end of the first half in the match played on Westy at the new Aquarium International Stadium in New York. The South Africans also opened the second half with another goal completely throwing the Nigerians into confusion with Governor Goswell Apabi watching from the state balls. The Eagles, which wasted an avalanche of chances to make hay in the opening minutes of the first half, however, pulled two goals back, the last coming in the dying minutes of the other time, despite playing a 10-man South African in the last 10 minutes. South Africa topped the group with 12 points, while Congo, which beat Sudan 1-0 away in Khartoum on Wednesday, occupied the second spot in the group with 10 points. And it, and and Pretoria now, Guinea has hired 50 like Cuban to... doctors as part of the fight to contain the outbreak of the Delhi Ebola virus during the Africa Cup of Nations next year. The West African country took over the organization of the Continental Football Tournament at the 11th hour last week when Morocco was stripped of the right to host the event after its express fear over the deadly virus being transmitted by visiting supporters and requested a postponement. The National Ebola Watchdog Body in Malabo and the Cuban Embassy have signed an agreement to recruit 50 Cuban doctors for three months with a view to tightening procedures in the run-up to the January championships. Equatoria Guinea has so far not reported a single case of Ebola within the country. Moving on to tennis now, Rafael Nadal says it is his goal to be fully fit for the Australian Open and competitive enough 
to challenge for a 15 Grand Slam title. Nadal missed the ATP World Tour Finals in London after undergoing surgery to remove his appendix. The 28-year-old has also battled knee, wrist and back problems, with doctors confirming his rehabilitation included stem cell treatment. Nadal, who won the French Open title in June for the ninth time in 10 years, will begin his comeback in the exhibition event in Abu Dhabi on January 1st. The Qatari capital Doha will stage the 2019 World Athletic Champions after beating rival bees from Barcelona and the American city of Eugene. It has been suggested the event runs from 28 September to 6 October to avoid the extreme heat of Qatar's summer. Qatari officials say temperatures are lower than in May when Doha stages annual diamond uh, league event. The 2015 World Athletics champions take place in Beijing from 22 to 30 August, while London's 2017 event is also scheduled for August. Qatar is also due to host the FIFA World Cup in 2022, and Doha's refurbished Khalifa International Stadium, also a World Cup venue, will be the main arena for the championship. And outside Nigeria now, a massive uh, snowstorm has wrecked havoc in the northeastern U.S. and left seven people dead, five in upstate New York. After sweeping across the Great Lakes, they stormed down 50, 550 rather, of snow in the Buffalo area with more forecasts. The storm caused five deaths in the area, one in a car crash, one trapped in a car, and three from heart attacks. Prison temperatures were recorded across all 50 U.S. states, including Florida, Hawaii, and there were more deaths elsewhere in the country. Residents were reported trapped in their homes and cars, and strong winds and icy roads caused no way, a motorway radar accident and forced school closure in parts of the U.S. Well, just before we close the show tonight, here is a quick reminder of some of the stories that made our headlines tonight. We've told you that federal government slashes 2015 budget proposals in response to falling oil prices. We also reported that the Senate again differs decision on whether to extend emergency rule in northeast Nigeria, summons security and defense chiefs. And finally, equity APC lawmakers desert House of Assembly complex as row deepens. Well, and that's been the show tonight on Court TV Primetime News. So on behalf of the entire news crew, I am Franco Manape wishing you a wonderful night rest. Good night.